All right, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, 2024 general election pre-election briefing. Um, this will be an opportunity for us to remind voters of what to expect over the coming week, um, to highlight some new resources that we have uh, created for voters um, and the public, uh, also to help you understand uh, what to expect as media partners in the coming days, explain some details about the election administration process, because I don't know about you, but I find most folks uh, have forgotten what they might have learned and seen uh, in the last election. Um, and also to raise awareness about um, you know, potential disruptions after Election Day um, and highlight some of the contingency plans and security considerations that our office has undertaken. Uh, the general election is just a week away, uh, seven days and a handful of hours. Uh, this year we will be electing a United States Senator, a United States Representative, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Treasurer, Auditor, Secretary of State, uh, Attorney General, and all House and Senate seats in Vermont, uh, as well as high bailiffs, and uh, most communities uh, have JPs on their ballot as well. Um, as of today, more than 150,000 Vermonters have already returned their ballot to their clerk's offices. Uh, those, those ballots will be securely stored um, in the clerk's office, uh, locked in the vault uh, until the tabulation is complete. And uh, voters, we want you to have a voting plan starting now. Um, it is probably too late to mail your ballot back, so this is the time when you want to go to your My Voter page to find out your clerk's office location, uh, the hours that they're open, and if they have a Dropbox, the location of that Dropbox. We highly recommend that voters at this point uh, hand their ballot in person to their town or city clerk. Um, you can track your ballot if you have already mailed it. You can check to see that it has been received by your clerk. Uh, to do that, you will log into your My Voter page. Uh, to log into your My Voter page, you just need your name, date of birth, uh, either your Vermont driver's license number or the last four of your social. Uh, MVP.Vermont.gov is that resource for folks. Um, and speaking of MVP.Vermont.gov, that's also where you can find your Universal Voter Guide. Our office has created a voter guide so that you can see candidate statements, websites, uh, social media handles, and contact information. Uh, for every candidate from the top of your ballot um, all the way to your House and Senate reps. And uh, so if you have not voted yet, I encourage you to take a look at your voter guide, find the candidate whose values most closely match your own, and make your voice heard. Um, if you need to register to vote, you can still do that. We have uh, up to same-day voter registration. Uh, there is an online voter registration tool on our website. However, at this point, we recommend that you go do that in person at your office, at your clerk's office, so that you can register and receive your ballot uh, at the same time. Um, normally, um, that online voter registration would trigger the, the clerk to automatically mail you a ballot, um, but we all know that time is short, so please don't count on being able to receive and return a ballot by mail at this point. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, disruptions and security, and um, I really appreciate the partnership with the governor and his team. Um, they have been uh, very supportive of us as we have worked through different considerations of uh, challenges that we might expect in this election season. Uh, our goal, as always, is transparent, secure, orderly, uh, open, and accessible elections in Vermont. Um, it is very important to keep all of our uh, election workers safe, from the elections team at the Secretary of State's office, uh, to your town and city clerks, your poll workers, uh, your boards of civil authority. Um, we're lucky in Vermont to have a little less vitriol than they do in some parts of this country, uh, but we are not immune to it. And we uh, still hear stories from town and city clerks uh, about angry interactions that they've had with voters. And I want to say very clearly, it is never acceptable for, uh, for someone to verbally accost their town or city clerk. These hardworking women and men are doing an important job to ensure our democracy functions and, uh, and 
it is never acceptable to, uh, to try to bully or intimidate uh, those hardworking Vermonters. Um, so we are aware of the potential for disruptions, uh, threats to cybersecurity or physical security. Uh, at this time, we, there have been no specific identified threats in Vermont. Um, however, throughout election year, we've heard a number of stories from town and city clerks. Um, and uh, I know that the governor stands with me in, uh, in sending out that message uh, that folks need to uh, act appropriately and not try to uh, bully their clerks. In fact, you should be telling your clerk thank you. Um, we've been working closely with federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Um, and that communication has been key to, uh, to feeling like we are prepared for election day. And the governor's team has been uh, an important collaborator in all of that. Um, we are working closely with the governor on contingencies in the event that there is power outages or uh, internet outages on election day. Um, and uh, we are keeping in close contact with those town and city clerks to make sure they have the support uh, that they need and the contingencies uh, that they might need to have in place. And so I'm going to uh, turn it over to Governor Scott for some uh, words about the collaboration between our offices. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, Secretary. It's good to be here today to talk more about uh, this election. It's an important time, which is only a week away. Earlier today, Secretary Copeland Hansis and her team joined our weekly cabinet meeting to talk about the upcoming election, what to expect, and what they are doing to make sure we have a fair, secure, and peaceful election, especially given what we're hearing at the national level. Secretary Copeland Hansis and her team continue to monitor what's happening across the state and keeping my team updated on what they're hearing. We'll continue to stay in close contact with the Secretary of State's office and do what we can to make sure elections in Vermont are safe and secure. One of the basic responsibilities of civic duty is to vote, whether it's in local elections or, as importantly, national elections. And although we may not agree on every policy issue or the candidates we're casting our vote for, it's essential we do our part to strengthen our democracy, treat each other with respect, and tamp down the polarization we're seeing across the country, and unfortunately, even here in Vermont. This division is harmful and leads to fewer willing to listen to other perspectives. Now, all my political life, I've served in the minority. So to accomplish anything, to get things done, I've had to reach across the aisle and compromise. And as a result, I've found most of the best solutions come through civil and respectful debate. But what we're seeing these days is anything but. There's so much anger and outrage out there. As a result, and because it seems to be everywhere, online, on TV, and on social media, it's easy to feel like there's nothing we can do and like it's just part of everyday life now. But I don't think we should accept that because this is something we can do. It takes us doing better and setting an example. Whether it's serving on a local board, mentoring kids, volunteering at a local nonprofit, helping out a neighbor in need, sprucing up your town. This accomplishes more, much more, than you may think. Because this could be the antidote to the political divisiveness I've talked about. By giving back, we can turn the tide, rebuild our sense of community, feel more connected to our neighbors, and be part of something bigger than ourselves. So again, I want to thank Secretary Copeland Hansis for all the work her team is doing. It's been a great partnership, and I want to remind Vermonters, the systems we have in place are secure, and we'll, we'll make sure the, visit, the voting process is protected. So I, I encourage all Vermonters to vote, 
because it's essential to our democracy. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the Secretary. Thank you so much, Governor Scott. Um, now I'm going to ask Deputy Hibbert and uh, Elections Director Sheehan to pass out uh, a sheet of resources and I'll run you through some of the resources that uh, we will send you home with today and that we hope voters will uh, be made aware of uh, in the coming day. Um, we've been sharing voter resources statewide um, for a number of weeks um, and uh, we've also been doing a fair amount of outreach uh, through our clerks and municipal officials, stakeholders, and the media, uh, but it never hurts to highlight these again. Um, also want to remind uh, our media friends how to get results on election night. Uh, so there's a handout that has QR codes with links to all of the resources I'm going to run through right now. Um, election results uh, you can find on our election night reporting page. Um, those are unofficial results and we will have them up and available as soon as they are reported to us by clerks. Um, other resources uh, that I've talked about a bit is your My Voter page, um, your online voter guide, which we uh, strongly encourage voters to use uh, in the run up to November 5th. Uh, we have several videos on our um, website that will uh, demystify and ex explain some of the procedures that folks will see uh, during the elections process. Uh, election security video and also how to register and vote, which is available in 14 languages, in, uh, including American Sign Language. Um, on our website, you also find a page, uh, Truth About Elections in Vermont, which addresses some of the common myths or misconceptions about how elections work. And then another page that we partnered with the Attorney General's Office on uh, with respect to AI deepfakes and scams. Um, there's a couple of post-election events that I want to make sure our media partners are aware of. Uh, so please do take down these dates and uh, plan to join us again for the uh, canvassing committee on November 12th. Uh, at that point, we'll be canvassing the results of the November 5th election. On December 3rd, we will conduct an audit of a selected number of towns and cities from across the state. Uh, we will bring their ballots to Montpelier and we will uh, check to be sure that the election results that were reported to us on election night uh, match what we see in those ballots. Uh, this is an important part of uh, ensuring that we know our elections are accurate. Uh, and then on December 17th, uh, we will have a meeting of the presidential electors and uh, the governor will join us again for that. All three of these events will be held at the State House um, and there will be extra security um, in the building on those days and so we will push out information uh, via press release to remind you all of those additional uh, security features on, uh, on those important post-election days. And so now, if you have questions related to elections, the function of elections, uh, how we tally votes, what resources are available, um, how we've been working together, uh, you can feel free to ask them. You mentioned it's probably too late to mail in your ballot. Either bring it to your town clerk or election worker. When is the latest you can put it in a drop box? So we recommend that if you are bringing your ballot back on election day that you actually take it to the polling place. Most clerks are checking their uh, ballot drop boxes up until the last moment, but some ballot drop boxes are at the clerk's office while the polling place might be in a different part of town. So if you get to November 5th, take it to your polling place. Um, before November 5th, ballot drop box or town clerk's office. How many extra ballots are town clerks given? Right, I'm thinking if I'm if I don't if I show up, I don't have my ballot. My cat ate it or something. My dog ate it. Yeah. Two months ago, like are are town clerks going to have enough ballots on hand to accommodate everybody showing up that doesn't have ballots? Director Sheehan, how many extra ballots roughly are our town and city clerks print? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they print an ample amount over and are sent sent to them based off of now that we've had the twenty. 22 election and this, we have a good good sense of how many ballots people are going to bring back on their own and what they'll need. So we print ample ballots and they also have um, measures beyond that that they can, can take with using 
accessible voting machines and stuff if they were to need to, but we, we ensure that they all have ample balance. And that's a good reminder to say, um, if you are voting on election day, uh, BYOB, bring your own ballot. Uh, you are all mailed a ballot if you are an active registered voter. Um, it helps the process along if you take that ballot with you on election day and you can cast your ballot there. Governor, you mentioned working with the Secretary of State's office on some contingency planning. What are you planning for? What contingencies are you prepared for? All the unexpected. Um, we've seen all kinds of things, uh, you know, that have been threatened across the country. Thankfully, not here in Vermont, uh, but we have to be prepared for anything. So, we've been working with our team, public safety, uh, building and general services, and so forth and so on. Um, again, you never know what to expect in Vermont. Uh, you should just expect the unexpected. So, we're just preparing for that. Whether there's, if there was a power. Um, breakdown, uh, let's say, uh, we'd be prepared for that. Um, so we're prepared for almost anything, we believe. Is there going to be a heightened police presence at uh, polling places, places? And how do you balance that? You don't want a large police presence at polling places generally, right? So what's the plan with regards to law enforcement? Yeah, I'm not sure that there's going to be a heightened uh, response in terms of the polling places, uh, but uh, we don't expect anything there. But but we'll be, again, prepared. Local law enforcement is uh, well-versed on what's happening that day and, and will uh, react appropriately. How has this year been different? You mentioned the polarization a ton. We saw the ballot boxes burn in the Pacific Northwest. That's a big thing that Oregon's dealing with right now. How has this election cycle been different for you or the Secretary of State preparation-wise compared to years prior? Well, again, I think we're working together on that, understanding the importance of a safe and secure election. So uh, this has provided an opportunity for us of different parties uh, working together for the greater good for democracy. Yeah, and, and uh, I would just add to that that uh, a great deal of the preparation that we've been doing with town and city clerks across the state has been around um, uh, de-escalation uh, tactics, around uh, using um, the resources that, that are available to do physical security assessments uh, so that everybody is uh, thinking carefully about the best way to protect the democratic process um, between now and November 5th. I think it's, can I, can I just add one thing though? Um, I think it's important for Vermonters to understand that they have a resource here. The Secretary of State's office will answer any questions you might have. So if you're wondering, you know, about a certain issue, call the Secretary of State's office and uh, they'll give you an answer. Because some, you know, there's a heightened sense of anxiety when they don't, when they hear something uh, that uh, they may have seen on, on national media or in, a, in some sort of you know, web page or something. Um, and they wonder, you know, is that true here in Vermont? What are we doing about that or this? Or just simple que questions they might have. Um, call the Secretary of State's office and uh, they can answer the questions or go to their website and you probably have the answers right there. But don't, uh, don't let it fester, you know, get the answers you need. How's the preparedness that you've been doing? It sounds like it's been coming from sort of like the national uh, atmosphere on this, but have you heard anything concerning in Vermont, anything specific? Uh, that folks should know about, about disruptions? So we have heard uh, stories from a number of town and city clerks about really negative interactions that they've had with, with people who uh, appear to have been agitated by something that they saw on social media or a report that they heard from other uh, parts of the country. Um, and so we've been working steadily and you know one of the most important reasons for the two of us to be standing in front of you here today is to just encourage people to bring the rhetoric down as the governor said ask the questions if you don't understand um, you know our democracy depends on people being able to uh, safely and securely cast their ballot um, on or before election day um, and so we are aiming to be prepared for whatever comes um, and we're encouraging people to, uh, to, to just ask questions. If I could just add another um, tidbit. So I know a lot of folks, um, not a lot, there's, there's some who don't agree uh, with the mail-in voting proposal, getting ballots in the mail. 
um, but that's what we have at this point in time. So if you're going to vote in person, make sure you bring your ballot with you. Otherwise, you'll have to sign an affidavit, which might cause another, it'd be another source of irritation for some, thinking that they have to sign an affidavit because they didn't bring their, uh, their ballot in with them. So to avoid that, just understand what you're getting yourself into, and, and if you have your ballot, bring it with you. That ballot, uh, that affidavit is an important part of uh, election security in Vermont. It is you promising that you have not cast the ballot that was mailed to you. And once you sign that affidavit, you're fine to have a, another ballot on election day. Um, but it just it conserves resources if you BYOB. Those interactions with the town clerks, are those at the 2022 election or previous election, or are those more recent? Those are more recent. Got it. Yeah. And do they involve things like the governor just described where, where someone's concerned about mail-in balloting or is that one good example? Or it sort of runs the gamut. gamut. You know, okay. elections are run just a little bit differently in, in every state. Mm -hmm. And so if someone saw a, a media report or uh, something inflammatory about something that happened in another state and they made the assumption that it was happening here, or they saw something here that that didn't look like what uh, you know what what they had watched it during voting uh, in another state. They might make the assumption that that means that there's something amiss. But every state has its own uh, election laws and its election procedures, and you know one of the most important uh, aspects of Vermont elections that that gives me confidence that they are secure is that the 247 duly sworn local town and city clerks are responsible for conducting that election in their community. So these are your neighbors. Uh, these are people who have taken an oath to, uh, to follow these procedures, um, and we trust them with that. Can you speak a little bit to the 150,000 people who've already voted by mail and how that compares to other years and what we know about those Voters, is there anything we can deduce from it? I've seen some reports that indicate X percentage of Democrats have voted already by mail in ballot and versus X percent of Republicans. And what can we say more about the 150 people so far? Do you want me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Jump right in. Speak to that. I mean, I think if you're hearing about Republicans or Democrats voting, I'm assuming you're hearing about other states. In other states, some states, people have to register uh, with with a party in Vermont. People don't don't register with with a party, right. so we don't have have those those data. Um, for the 150,000, we can say that over 150,000 have voted as of today. It was just over 140,000 as of yesterday. So 10,000 have come. They're mm -hmm. they're flowing with the week with the yeah. week to go. That number is is uh, is higher than it was in 2022. It's lower than it was in 2020. I think those are to be. Um, expected in many ways. A presidential election is going to be higher than a non-presidential election. And in 2020, if we think back, that was right in the middle of the pandemic. People were, uh, you know, weren't encouraged to go into the, the polling places. Now we're at the place where if you find it more convenient to vote from home and mail it weeks out, great. If, as we talked about, if you got to one week away, we encourage you not to mail it. But still, if you don't want to wait in line, you can bring it right to the polling station. But many Vermonters enjoy the experience and that participatory democracy of being in line, going through the checklist, going to the booth. So um, you know, as we saw a higher percentage of people in 2022 voting in person compared to 2020, you know, I think it's reasonable to expect that might be similar in 2024. So when you add all those up together, I think the numbers are about in line with where you'd expect them. And do you have a turnout expectation for this year, based on what you know about the interest in the election and voting patterns in Vermont? We, you know, we don't. I think at this point we have, you can kind of build whatever models off of those last couple elections and look like we might be in about the same, the same place. As we talked about 2020 was the highest uh, turnout ever, you know, over 70%. Over we had 370,000. Uh, votes cast then it's mm -hmm. very possible would we'll be in that neighborhood again and we'll know in just over a week so that 150 represents quick math maybe 40 percent of people who were expected to vote in this year's election may have already voted and that number is going to increase as we get closer to election day right? yeah certainly yeah certainly will increase if we look at the last two elections with one week out we'd had about two-thirds of the Early voters voted prior to that last week out. About one third of early voters voted in that 
you know, final week up until the day, the day before, um, and then you had, you know, between 30, 40, 45 percent, you know, vote in uh, in person on the on the day. Depending and, on and remind right. me again how having a really high percentage of votes by mail affects how long it will take to know the results. It doesn't affect it in, in Vermont. In okay. some states, have, some states are postmark right. states, so they they allow you to. Um, you know, your ballot to be counted a few days later. In Vermont, your ballot needs to be in the hands of your, your town, uh, town clerk and your, your BCA at 7 p.m. On, on election day. So whether you're a hand count town or whether you're a town that uses tabulators, that, that evening all ballots are gonna be, gonna be counted next, next Tuesday. Good. And I'll just say, this office has worked very closely with town and city clerks over the years to make sure that our election laws um, are, uh, are crafted in a way that clerks um, can uh, safely and accurately count their ballots uh, as smoothly as possible. And so Vermont law allows the, the tabulator towns to begin to put the ballots through the tabulator right. before election day. Uh, you can't push the results. Uh, you can only see how many ballots uh, have already been entered into the tabulator. And that's an important marker for every single clerk as they are bringing in those mailed in ballots uh, to double check with their checklist. This is how many ballots the checklist says we've received. This is how many ballots have been put into the tabulator. We know those numbers match. Governor, you've talked a lot about sort of the divisiveness around the country and the anger. I'm just wondering, is this presidential election, in your mind, a really pivotal election for this country? I mean, is it, would it, is it too far to say that democracy is at stake? I, don't, I think democracy is stronger um, than this election uh, or the past election or previous elections. I think democracy will survive, um, but it is a pivotal time. Uh, can we can we vote uh, and do it in in numbers that are appropriate, uh, and uh, and do so and accept the results afterwards? And that's what I'm concerned with. You know, regardless of who wins, are we willing to accept the results? And uh, and again, that's why we're here today. Uh, to make sure that people uh, feel, uh, know that we're, we're aware of this and uh, that we want to make sure this is a safe election and, and is, is guarded uh, from some of the issues that they've been facing or hearing about uh, throughout the country. Because it's, it's essential. Uh, again, we see the polarization, I talk about this a lot uh, throughout the country, and it's just not good. It's not healthy uh, for our democracy. We're, we're human beings first, we're Americans, um, and we're members of other political parties after. Um, so let's remember, that we'll, we'll get through this one way or another, um, but, uh, but we'd like to make sure that we're doing this in a, in a safe way uh, so that people will accept the results after the after the election. And have you decided who you're voting for? I um, I have not, as I've said before, I will not be voting for the former president, President Trump, uh, but I have made a decision on the other. So do you have some reluctance about voting for the vice president? Can um, you share yeah. your, well, your thinking? Well, I, I, I answered the question about the election itself. Um, and we said we weren't going to take any questions outside of that realm. Uh, so I'll just leave it at that. You'll have your opportunity. When do you plan to vote? Sorry. On election day. On election day yeah. at your local polling place. Yes. And the media will be aware of when that's occurring and will be able to tag along and some, hang out and yeah, some find out at that point? Sometime <laughs> that day. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Get there early. Okay. Do, do we know how many ballots were cured in 2022, and how many are you expecting to go through that process this time? I can, I can follow up with you on, on both those specific numbers. Okay. How much do we pay to send out ballots to every registered voter? How, is it, how much does that cost? <laughs> We'll have to follow up with you on that. Yeah, so I don't have that number off the top of my head. One more question about the town clerks. How many, how many incidents are we talking about? How pervasive is this problem with people sort of? Um... That I know of a handful. 
um, you know, six to ten maybe. Um, but you know, not every incident is something that warrants elevating to the secretary's attention. Um, I try to stay in very close contact with uh, town and city clerks uh, through my town clerk advisory group. Uh, those folks have been really helpful in um, in helping me understand the challenges that uh, that they're facing, and uh, and it's been a big part of how we've crafted the the supports and trainings that we're doing for clerks this year is asking them what do you need. And are those independent sort of around the state, or is that like the same person, the same clerk? Um, uh, no, around? that that would be uh, individual instances. Yeah. What about the voter rolls? I know last time around that was a big concern of a Burlington apartment where there's college kids that live there and three, four, maybe five ballots show up. Right. Has anything has anything changed since the last time around? Um, like, yeah, what, what's being done? About so that? we've been messaging pretty heavily uh, as, as we've been talking about the election that if you get a ballot to your home uh, for someone who doesn't live there, it's a good idea to return that ballot unopened to the town or city clerk. Um, you know, any community that has a number of rental units is going to have that turnover that might uh, involve somebody not, uh, re not updating their voter registration and therefore being automatically mailed a ballot. Um, we, uh, we encourage people to go to their My Voter page to update their voter registration information um, and, uh, and not everybody does that. Uh, we do have a, a system in place in order to help the clerks do that voter registration updating that they need to. Um, one of the challenges with that this year has been uh, that uh, there has not been that 90-day window that they would need. Uh, federal law prohibits um, purging of checklists within 90 days of an election, and so we had a March presidential primary and then a number of subsequent school budget votes and revotes. Uh, and then the August primary and now the general election. So there, hasn't, there have not been uh, very many windows for clerks to be doing that updating, uh, but we do intend to bear down on that as soon as uh, the dust settles on the November 5th election. Um, and that treasure trove of undeliverable ballots is very important to get into the hands of the clerks so that they can begin that sleuthing process to figure out, is that person still in this community? Have they moved elsewhere? Uh, should we be uh, removing them from the voter rolls? Have you heard anyone say that they plan to monitor the voting that goes on at polling places in any organized way, either from a partisan organization or, or any clerks being concerned about people asserting their right to oversee the counting or oversee the voting? That can sometimes get a little tense sometimes, right? Or at least other places I think it can. Yeah, you know, I can't say that I'm aware of uh, any organized effort around that, um, on that front, but we do make sure that the clerks are aware of how they should arrange their polling location so that there is a, a, a secure area, you know, within eyesight of what's happening uh, during the counting process for people who want to watch the process unfold. Um, that is legal, it is uh, open to the public, um, as long as folks aren't disrupting that process. Right. Wonderful. This is, this is what you say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Take that pause and yeah, scoot yeah. out the door. <laughs> do, it, do it as quick as you yeah. possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you all for coming, uh, and thank you, Governor Scott, for uh, the collaboration and the support uh, as we uh, finish this process of running an election. And the good news is in about, you know, one week it'll be over, hopefully. hopefully. Seven days and a, a couple of hours. <laughs> Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you again.